We're just going to get the marinade going for the chicken for tomorrow's Indian style curry. So in this pan I've got a teaspoon of coriander seed, a teaspoon of fennel seed and a teaspoon of cumin seeds. To that I'm going to add one clove, no more. And then we're going to split these cardamom pods and just take the seeds out. We don't want the pods, we just want those seeds. So, say about eight cardamoms and the seeds thrown in. Okay, so that's all the dried spices in there. I'm now gonna put it on a really low heat and just warm it until we start to get a good smell come up and the natural oils come out. Okay, so these are now toasted. I'm gonna pop them into our little mini chopper and along with that we're going to put a good bit of ginger a good bit of garlic and then we're just going to grind that okay let's start to grind it so we're going to add some lemon juice Give it another grind. Okay, now into that we're going to put. Don't get it open. Some chili powder. About a teaspoon. And then about a teaspoon. Well, say half a teaspoon of. Um, ground turmeric and then a spoonful of yogurt and we're going to grind it again okay so now we've got our marinade it's a pretty similar to a sort of ticker marinade you know like a chicken ticker it's that sort of thing you could add red food colouring to it if you really wanted to to make it look kind of Indian restaurant-ish but there's no need for it because it's going to be cooked into a curry anyway so there you have your marinade all we're going to do is coat our chicken in it and then we're going to set it aside in the fridge overnight ready to barbecue to go into our, our curry sauce tomorrow That's it. So we're just assembling all the stuff we need for our curry. So I'll start running through it. Firstly for the vegetable curry, we've got some cauliflower, some aubergine, tomato, red peppers, and Jersey raw potatoes, which are fully cooked. Um, for the spices for the curry, we have one teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of coriander and one teaspoon of paprika. We're also in today going to add some chopped chilies, some I can see it. chopped chilies, chopped ginger, chopped garlic, some coriander, uh, an onion, and a little, little methi, which is methi is um, dried uh, fenugreek leaves. Uh, it, it's what gives Indian food that wonderful smell also some chopped tomatoes and ghee obviously uh, for the chicken curry I'll show you in a minute we've got the chicken barbecue in on the little barbecue as we speak but the spices are just turmeric coriander and um, cumin uh, along with the chili garlic ginger chopped onion we're gonna have uh, some coconut milk in there we're gonna put some yogurt in there we're going to have two types of almond. We've got ground almonds and toasted almonds. Again with the methi. Uh, and I've got some lovely chicken stock that we made yesterday doing the Thai curry. 
uh, along with a spoon for a tomato and obviously the ghee. We are going to write all the ingredients underneath so you haven't got to worry about trying to find it. For the salad, we're going to, we've got some tomato, julienne of cucumber, red onion and red chilies. Uh, for the naan bread, we've got in here for the dry ingredients, we've got 300 grams of strong white flour, half teaspoon of baking powder, um, 7 to 10 grams of yeast, a couple of teaspoons of sugar. Uh, to that we're going to add some melted ghee, 25 grams, 125 grams of warm water and uh, 150 grams of natural yogurt or Greek yogurt in this case. Also we're going to add, once it's kneaded, we're going to add some um, nigella seeds or black onion seeds is the other name for them. We're also going to be making a mint uh, dip for the poppadoms, which we've got some lovely fresh mint and some yogurt. Into that we'll use some garam masala, um, salt, pepper, some sugar. Um, there you go, maybe a bit of lemon juice depending on what the flavour is. So there you go, so the menu is um, a nice chicken curry. The chicken curry is not a named curry, it's one that I've done. It's I love dipping naan bread in a curry. My, my preference really for curry is Thai, but I love dipping and, and all the bits that go with an Indian curry. My wife loves chicken korma, but I think it's too boring for me. I like something with a lot more spice. So this is a curry I've come up with. It's got the creaminess and the, 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 the aromatic approach of the korma, just with some wuhi added in there. And then finally for the pilau rice, we've got some chopped shallot, um, let me bring this over so you can see it, chopped shallot, we've got some coriander seed, some cumin seed, um, some fennel seed, some green cardamom seeds, some cloves and a piece of cinnamon stick. You should use cassia um, which is like the Indian version of it, um, I haven't got any so I'm going to use cinnamon, it's nearly the same. Uh, some basmati rice obviously. Um, the only part of the meal that we're not actually making ourselves is the poppadoms, um, but there you go, you can't have everything. Now why are we doing this ourselves? Why don't we buy a takeaway? This is going to be a feast for four people and it's all going to come in at less than £25 for everything. Now if you get a big takeaway Indian meal delivered, it's going to cost you 50 60 upwards. Um, and also you've got the fun. You know, you and your partner grab a couple of bottles of wine, slowly cook it in the kitchen, have a beer, whatever. It's a social event as well as a, a culinary event. So, having showed you all that, I'm going to go out to the barbecue, show you the chicken now. Okay, this is the chicken on the barbecue. Um, the reason we're doing this is you can do it in a frying pan if you want to seal it off, but I like the extra flavour of the barbecue to get into the sauce. Okay, so let's start by getting our chicken on. As you saw, the chicken's already barbecued. Now it's about halfway cooked. It's not fully cooked. I want to cook it in the curry sauce for a good hour, or maybe two hours even, on a really low temperature, just to get them flavors to really mingle. So, into the pot, put some ghee. Um, if you don't know, ghee is just like clarified butter. And we've not got the pot too hot because I don't want anything to burn or, or cook too quickly because we've got some big flavours that have got to really mellow down a bit. So we're going to put in some nice fresh ginger. Nice wallop of garlic. Now look, how much chilli you put in is entirely up to you. I'm using these little green chilies. I like a bit of heat. I haven't taken the seeds out, I don't see the point. Um, so, look at more. As I say, it's up to you how much and what sort of chilies you use. Just be aware if you're going to use the little tiny bird's eye ones, um, the Thai ones, that they are really strong and um, yes, they will come and bite you. So we're going to let this cook without colouring for a few minutes to let the flavours really come out. Okay, the smells change now. When you're cooking garlic and ginger, 
you need to be concentrate on the smell rather than the look of it. When it first starts cooking, it's a little bit bitter and sort of not that nice. And then after a while, you start getting this lovely smell of musty garlic bread sort of thing. And that's when you know that it's cooked out enough to continue. So we're going to add some chopped onion, and maybe an onion and a half there. And now we're going to gently, gently cook the onions as well until they change their smell. Because as you know, when you put onions in, they, they smell a little bit gassy, a little bit... Um, so we've got to let that smell change. So that's probably going to take five, ten minutes. Okay, you can see that that's sweated down nicely. And you can smell the difference as well. Now, we're going to add the spices. Remember, it's the cumin, coriander and turmeric. We don't want to rush these spices, we need to let them fry in this goo. And then we're going to add some tomato and we're going to let that boil away to nothing because we want to keep cooking these spices without all the liquid in there. So it's a slow process of just add moisture, let it cook down, add moisture, let it cook down. And the more you do it, the better those spices are going to taste at the end. Never rush the spices. Okay, now I'm going to add half a tin of chopped tomatoes. The other half of the tin is going to go on the vegetable curry. And now we're going to cook these spices and tomato, turn the heat up a bit, and we're going to let it cook right the way down until it's virtually frying again. So we're going to get rid of all of the moisture. By that time, the spice and the tomatoes will have um, intensified. So you can see that most of the moisture has gone. The, uh, the gears come back and it's, it's frying rather than boiling. Each time we add liquid and boil it down, we're intensifying all the flavors. So now I'm going to add a ladle of that chicken stock we made yesterday and I'm going to do it again I'm going to boil this right down till all the ghee comes back and it's frying again each time we're doing that intensification is happening okay so once again you can see it's down to the ghee so yet again another ladle the stock more this time a couple of ladles and we're going to reduce it right the way down again, but this is the last time for the reduction. So we'll come back with five. Well, you can see now all that chicken stock has gone again. So what we're going to do now is add some coconut milk. There's about two tins, I suppose. Don't get the thick one. And I've I've already added some extra water to that because I don't want it thick because we're going to add some um, ground almonds now. That's going to thicken it up. So all them lovely ground almonds in there. Don't put the, um, the toasted ones there for later on. So that's those. We're also going to, also going to add some palm sugar. About a palmful. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's going to be quite a sweet, creamy affair, this curry, um, but with plenty of backbone to it. So now we're going to bring this to the boil, and then we're going to add our chicken and throw it all in the oven. Okay, that's come up to heat now. Now don't forget the ground almonds, as they cook, will expand and go sort of mushy, so that it will thicken. So we're going to add some salt and pepper, a little bit of flavour. Make this sauce and put breast in if you want. I like to cook the meat on the bone because you just get a much better flavour. I'm going to put some water in this to get them juices up and add that to it. Remember, don't let this get too thick. You won't be able to enjoy it if it's too thick. 
you want it just thick enough that you can dunk a naan bread in it and, and enjoy it. So, as I say, as that cooks, it will get thicker. So now we're just going to put the lid on that and we're going to throw it in the oven. I'm going to cook it on 140 for about an hour. You want to cook it on 160 for three quarters of an hour, fine. You know, the lower the heat, the longer you cook it. Um, it will hold together better if it's cooked at a lower temperature, but you could get away with cooking it in half an hour if you really want to. Um, I'm going to go for an hour, hour and a half. As I say, 140 to deal with, then I may turn it round down to 120. So, in the oven we go. Don't get the curries in the oven, so let's turn our attention to the naan bread. So you know all the dry ingredients, they're in there, we're going to list it at the bottom of the thing. Uh, in with the, these are lots sort of lukewarm with the liquids, the yoghurt, the water and the ghee. So we put this on, we're going to let it go slowly for about a minute till everything gathers in. Then we're going to turn the power up so it goes medium for about 8 to 10 minutes. Okay, that's needed enough. You can tell when it's needed enough because it'll form a ball and it'll, it won't stick to the sides of the, um, the bowl. So now we're going to add, I don't know, a teaspoon of nigella seeds or black onion seeds. This will give it a really good flavour at the end. And now we'll need it for about another two minutes. Okay, so that's our nam dough made. We're just going to put a cover over it and then we'll leave it to double in size. It shouldn't take that long because it's not only got yeast in it, it's also got a little bit of baking powder. So, yeah, half an hour or so. Pop that aside. Meanwhile, we can turn our attentions to the vegetable curry now. Okay, so here we go with the vegetable curry. Same as the last one. We want to cook our ginger, garlic, I'm putting less chilli this time because the paprika I'm using is a, it's a spicy paprika, it's not the sweet. So there's going to be a bit of heat comes from that as well. So we're going to let this cook out, get rid of them nasty smells. Okay, they're smelling a lot better now, so we'll add some chopped onion. We'll cook that out for a few minutes. Okay, now we're going to turn the heat down. We're going to add our spices, cumin, coriander, turmeric, spicy paprika. And the same as before, we're going to really fry these spices out, allow the flavours to develop and mellow a bit. So, back in five. Okay, spices are cooked out, so we're going to add tomato. And the same as before, we're going to let that boil right the way down until it comes back to a fry. As you can see, it's back to a fry. We're going to add the rest of that chicken stock. And again, we're going to reduce it down, but not quite as much as we just have. Um, reduce it down. This isn't going to be a runny curry or a, a saucy curry. It's going to be kind of dry. So we're going to let all that boil down at least by two thirds. As you can see, it's all reduced down. So we're going to add some salt because we're putting vegetables in. And then whatever vegetables you're using for this, you don't have to use what I've used. I've just happened to have these in the fridge. So you decide which ones you want to be softest and which ones you want to be firm. And add, add them at the intervals that you fancy. So I don't like undercooked aubergine, so I'm adding the aubergine now. I'm going to give that a couple of minutes before I add the peppers and cauliflower. A few minutes time. So they've had a minute or two. So I'm going to add the cauliflower and the peppers, but not the potatoes and the tomatoes yet. And 
go. Just gonna let that cook for a bit. You can see it's neither dry nor wet. It's somewhere in between. Okay, so they've cooked out a bit. We're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. So if you want to drop a bowl of spinach in there or you know whatever veg you fancy, drop all those in. Find a bit more seasoning. And then we'll just let that soften down a little bit and that's ready to rock and roll. Meanwhile, we'll turn our attention to the salads and dips. Right. I'll just show you the, um, the vegetable curry now is cooked. So we're going to add some methi or fenugreek leaves. This is for the flavour and the smell. And then we can turn this off and then we can just warm it up when the other stuff's ready. So I'll put that to a side. The yoghurt dip. So we've got yoghurt. It's a Greek style yoghurt. We're going to season it with salt and pepper. We'll put some garam masala. I suppose about a quarter of a teaspoon. The yoghurt's really thick so I'm going to water it down with some milk. Because we want kind of a dippy thing. We're going to add a little bit Paprika. I'm using smoked paprika. Look, if you want to use cayenne pepper, that's fine. And then a goodly amount of mint, freshly chopped. You can use a mint sauce if you want, but it's not quite the same. Okay, and then finally, when I find it, a little bit of sugar. Okay, so a little bit of sugar. Stay about a teaspoon. And then we just mix all that together. You want it runny enough so that you can dip your pop with on in it. This one's more about the accompaniments of the curry rather than the curry, but anyway, it's still important. So there you go, that's your, your mint dip. You want to add more salt and pepper, more sugar, whatever you want, but basically that's that. Okay, salad. All we've got is the julienne of cucumber, tomatoes, onions, red chilies, a load of chopped coriander, mainly the roots. You get more flavour from the roots and we can use the tops to garnish things. A little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm using a cider vinegar, you use whatever vinegar you like. Just a couple of teaspoons of that on top. And literally, that's all there is to it. Now you want to do this about half hour before you eat, because you want the vinegar to work its magic on the onions and break down the sugars in that inside. So there you go, that's the salad, as simple as that. But for the rice, what we're going to do is cook the rice in a rice uh, cooker. And I'm going to put four cups or four measures of basmati rice and four cups or measures of um, water. And then turn it on. When it's finished cooking, we're going to add this mixture we're making now. So we've got a good wallop of ghee. Rice loves butter. It always has done. So into that we're going to put the shallots, the um, cumin, the coriander seed, fennel seed, the, uh, the cloves and the cinnamon. And we're going to gently, gently fry that so that all of those lovely aromats come out. We're not colouring it, we're just sweating it. So a low temperature, probably 10 minutes or so. Just going to show you the setup I've got for the cooking of the, um, the poppadons and the naan breads. This is a cast iron tray. You can get them virtually anywhere. 
the TK doesn't really cheat normally. I've got the grill on at 300 degrees and this has been heating up for approximately half an hour. When we put the naan bread on it, it, we're trying to recreate the inside of a tandoor oven. And you know, they're, they're like three, 400 degrees. So this should do it. And also with the poplons, we just lay it on there and it will go in, in seconds, it will pop. Um, I'll show you one go. Okay, time for the naan bread. Just going to put some oil on the board, a little oil on my hands. Gonna turn out that mixture. Give a little stretch and fold. Get them air bubbles out. Now I think this should make about, yeah, about eight fan braids. So, pull it up and then just make nice little balls of the dough and pop it down. Okay, we've got our little balls done. So, you can use a rolling pin, but you know, honestly don't. make a rough nan shape. It's not got to be smooth, it's not got to be perfect, anything like that. There you go, that's a couple of minutes. Okay, so we've got our hot tray and then we throw a couple of nan breads on there. Don't forget, this grows at 300 degrees. We're trying to recreate the effect of a tandoori oven. Okay, now the nan breads are out from under the grill, we're just gonna brush them with some melted ghee. Or, you know, melted butter. I know it looks like it's all greasy now, but it's important to do this. Because the bread will absorb some of that butter and become all yummy yummy. So what we're doing with it now, is we're just going to pop them in the Pyrex dish to keep warm. That's it, that's your nan bread. So, rice cooker, I know I said four measures, I'm just going to use a big old mug. So, you're after equal proportions of water and rice. So, I'm sure of rice. One measure of water. Splash for luck. Some salt. It on, turn the rice cooker on. Now it will stop when it's ready to stop, and then we're going to add the other stuff. Okay, so the rice is cook, uh, cooked, it's clicked over to warm. The good thing about these rice cookers is they will hold it at the correct temperature um, as long as you want to, and it will keep it all nice and soft. So, into the rice now, we add our Aramax and our ghee. So we just pop them in. I'm going to stir it up once, put the lid back on, and let it sit for about 15 minutes. Okay, our curry's coming out of the oven now. Just time to finish it off. What I'm going to do is take out the um, chicken. Oh, if you could smell this. Pop it on the plate. A 
even though it's been cooked a long time in this curry sauce, you can still smell the barbecue on it. It's wonderful. So that's our chick chick. Now we just stir this up. Check it's not too thick. Actually, that's about right. So that's about. We're now going to add the toasted almonds. And the methy, or fenugreek if you like. There we go. And that's essentially the sauce done. We're just going to check it for salt, sweetness and um, softness. Oh, that's spot on. So there we go, that's the sauce, that's the chicken. All we've got to do now is assemble everything and serve. Okay, here we have your feast for four. Your chicken curry, pilau rice. Now the reason the pilau rice is that colour and not all pretty colours is because we haven't added any artificial colourings or anything. There's your poppadoms, lovely mint yoghurt, buy empty beer glass, more beer please. That's your vegetable curry lovely salad. There you have it, a feast for four.